amazing their records. One old guy for now, while Sydney's lockdown restrictions continue, Mike and I have decided to sort of press on and provide you with some fun segments. As promised last week, we're going to be looking at one hit wonders of the 1980s, okay? And uh, before we start, please share our episodes with your friends, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our channel, okay? and keep those comments coming through. We love hearing from you, okay? Uh, as promised, you know, 1980s are... Uh, one Hit Wonders. And what inspired this was I was watching, you know, One Hit Wonders top 10 of another uh, uh, platform on um, another ch YouTube channel. Okay. And this song came up. Okay. Beds are burning midnight oil as a one hit wonder. And of course, this was an American uh, channel. And for them, Beds are burning was a, a one hit wonder for midnight oil, even though I know they've got an enormous back catalog with so many successful songs here in Australia, okay? So I started to delve into this notion of, you know, what is a one hit wonder? Does it live up to it, okay? Or is it just, you know, something that we term, okay, um, because of one dominant uh, music industry or what music nation, okay, they deem it as a one hit wonder, even though they could, this band could be very big in their native country, okay? So yes, you know, I had a look at all this and I'm going to start off this week with a massive song, okay? It was number one in 15 countries, okay? Including Australia with eight weeks at the top there. I remember it on a countdown watching it, you know, the countdown from 10 to one and it was one up there for a long time, okay? A couple of months almost. Now, and um, this song also pushed the boundaries of multiculturalism, bringing you know, a different culture into mainstream society. I'm talking about none other than... It's a not so bad, it's a nicer place, i ah, shut up your face. Joe Dolce's Shut Up By Your Face, right? Okay, a very, very funny song, okay, quirky, yes, okay, with that Italian accent and he's, you know, he's bringing it on, okay, and that is hilarious, okay. A little bit about Dol Joe Dolce, he's American from Ohio, okay, he comes from, you know, Italian parents, okay, so obviously, okay, this inspired him, I can imagine him going to Nonna and Nonna's house for the, the big fat Italian lunch and dinner, and hearing, you know, hey, hey, what are you doing? You know, ah, shut up, you know, whatever it is. And all that's in here, okay? And of course, the big notion of, hey, you got to have some respect, you know, to, to your elders, okay? So being uh, a school kid and having so many Italian friends, I could easily relate to it and going out to their houses and having, you know, you know, tasting gnocchi for the first time and all that, I could sort of empathise with all this, okay? That whole notion of that uno fazza, uno razza, okay? Where nonno becomes papu and, and nonna becomes yaya and it's all the same, isn't it? Okay, so like I said, this became massive, right? So it was number one, you know, from everywhere, from, you know, Australia and the UK, you know, to Germany, to Puerto Rico and Fiji, right? Get that, right? So it was out there. I'm sure it became a party favourite, okay, after a few drinks. And this came on, I'm sure there were, you know, everyone was Italian, okay? Everyone was Italian at the party, okay? And, you know, impersonating Joe Dolce, right? But like I said, there is a very, very serious side to this song because this song pushes... You know, the Italian, the Italian culture into mainstream society, okay? Because he wrote it, you know, for the Italians of Melbourne, okay? So, yes, you know, um, and of course, the album was called Shut Up Your Face, right? And uh, of course, there was another song called If You Want to Be Happy, and that reached number seven in Australia, I think, in New Zealand, it just touched the top 40 or whatever it was. There was a, also a Christmas album, which there was a song called Pizza Pizza, as well as If You Touch On My Car, a break of your face, right? So again, there's that whole, you know, that Italian humour, okay? The Italian humour coming through um, his, both of those albums. Now, the thing is, after that, he sort of moves away from that kind of music. You know, I'm glad he did, you know, to sort of maybe avoid stereotype, this stereotype. And he does write with his partner, Lynn Van Heck, a song called Intimacy on the Terminator soundtrack, which is quite interesting also. But the thing is, Joe Dolce, I think, could have done anything, okay, because he is such a gifted person, okay, whether it is through poetry, okay, he was a poet laureate of Melbourne, you know, a few years ago, right, he's written essays, you know, from everything from, you know, like, you know, he's, he's written essays and, they, you know, published essays, okay, uh, he's done so much, so I think this, 
you know, shut up your face. And um, the Christmas album is just one point in his journey as, as a, as a, you know, as a essayist, as a poet, as a reviewer, as a theatre person, because he's, you know, his theatre group with Lynn Van Heck goes for many, many, many years, right? So, okay, like I said, he could have done anything, but like I also said, um, this is very, very important because this is where you know this migrant generation is starting to push their culture, their humour, their language into. Australian mainstream society. I suppose this is sort of like uh, what Nick Giannopoulos did uh, a few years after this with Wogs Out of Work, okay, and his and his um, his uh, group of uh, comedians, okay. So yeah, they pushed ethnic humour out there, and Joe Dolce is another piece in that pushing, okay, that pushing into uh, mainstream Australia, okay, and Australians loving it, you know, finding it very very funny. Okay, did you buy this? Okay, did you buy Shut Up Your Face? Did you sing it at a party after a couple of drinks? Okay, send in your comments. Um, don't forget to share this episode with your friends. Like us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, tomorrow I've got a massive, massive one hit wonder. I look forward to seeing you then. Okay, all the best. Take care. Thank you.